Okay, so welcome everyone to this Wisdom of Water Healing event. I'm so happy to see all of you. I wanna share with you this morning when I was going for my walk, one of my spirit animals, a hummingbird, like flew down in front of me, like literally hovered in front of me, like literally 12 inches in front of me and it just hovered there. And for like 30 seconds, we looked into each other's eyes and it was so, all I could utter from my heart was thank you, thank you, thank you. It felt like such a blessing for today's event. So thank you, thank you for being here. Um, so nice to see you, you all. Some of you I know and, and some of you I don't know. So I, I wanna start by um, orienting you a little bit to what we're gonna be doing today uh, before we jump into the actual healing experience itself. So let's, I'm gonna go back to sharing some slides with you um, and then we'll go into the actual healing. All right, so let's see here. I'm gonna get out of this, bring this up. Please let me know if um, you can see the slides and hear me. Sometimes I, oh, oops, let's go back. So, yeah, so all good. You can see the slides, you can hear me, great. I may not be able to um, keep an eye on the chat at all times, so I'll just, look at it later. So if anyone, if I'm not, you can't hear me or something's going on, someone just unmute themselves and let me know. Okay, but otherwise, let's get going to this Wisdom of Water healing event. Thank you for joining me on this Friday morning to come to the waters, be with the waters. And a komomai, which in Hawaii uh, means welcome. And Hawaii is the land and the sea where I was born and raised. And for those of you who don't know me, I'm Dr. Elizabeth Gutierrez. I'm a child, adolescent, and adult psychiatrist. And I have a private practice here in Northern California. But the work I'm going to share with you today is, is not psychiatry. It's, it's something entirely new. And it's what I call human ecological restoration. And I'll be sharing with you more about what that is. And today, I'm really here in my role as a water keeper. And a water keeper is someone who has a sacred commitment to water, to be in service to water, to be a messenger for water, to be a vessel, to be a channel for water. And really all of us are water keepers because we are all keepers of our own waters, our own internal waters. And we honor water by, by making sure our waters run as freely and purely as possible. And that's what today's event is really going to help facilitate. So they say that a picture speaks a thousand words and I wanna orient you to today's experience um, by having you tune in to your own inner landscape. So how does this landscape, how does this image make you feel? Observe what feelings, what associations, what emotions, what memories come up for you. And all of those are part of your inner landscape. So oftentimes we're so externally oriented. We take in a lot of information from the outside world through our senses. But we also have a lot of information coming up and through us from our inner landscape. And that's what's really, what we're really going to focus on today is our inner landscape. So, so how does this landscape make you feel? And how does this landscape make you feel? How does this image make you feel of the Elwa Dam on here in Washington State, near Olympic National Park? Just take a look and see what, what feelings come up for you.
And then how about, how about this one, a freely flowing Elwa River? So just take in the information about how those images made you feel. And so what is human ecological restoration? You know, I don't hear anyone else talking about this in this term. So, but this is how, this is what I've call, come to call my work. And so I get to define it. <laughs> so ecology is the study of relationships between living organisms and their environment. And ecologists restore an environment through cleaning up toxins and pollution and removing artificial structures and diversions and creating habitats for native species to return and restoring a vibrant ecosystem of life. So human ecological restoration is about restoring our inner landscape, our internal waterways, and our consciousness of how we relate to ourselves, our bodies, each other, our environment, our home environment, and then also our shared home, this planet Earth, so that we can all come back into harmony with the greater ecosystem of life. So you can say that humans are actually the toxins and the pollutants and the ones that are blocking the, the flow and the ecosystem of life on our planet. Like, we are the ones who are not in sync, not in harmony. We are the toxins and the pollutants. And so it's really our responsibility as humans for us to clean up our own work, to clean up ourselves so that we can rejoin this harmony of life on our planet. So what are the pollutants and blockages in our inner landscape? So when I work with clients, I've come to sort of recognize and characterize um, these sort of domains and organizations of categories of how we as humans have become blocked and how we are the toxins and the pollutants and what, what has contributed to our pollution. So the first category is, is what we ingest. So not just nutritionally, but what we ingest through our media, through our relationships, through our living environment, through our culture and through our society. So what we literally take into our system. What we don't digest, so our emotions, our old patterns, our energy blockages, trauma, loss, grief, shame, unresolved ancestral wounds and patterns. You know, yesterday a dear friend emailed, uh, sent me um, an article about how hundreds of thousands of toxic waste barrels were literally dumped into the ocean off the Gulf Coast of Mexico in the 1970s. Like the EPA permitted Shell and all these other oil and, and industrial companies to just go ahead and, and just dump it there. Like we don't think it's gonna be a problem. And <laughs> In some ways, us humans do the same things with, with our emotions and our toxins. We just kind of stuff them away somewhere and feel like they're not going to bother us, but they do. And, and we need to clear and clean them out. And that's what today's water healing will help facilitate. Whatever you're ready to surface and release, we will clean and clear out. On top of what we take in and what we don't digest, we also produce, we also produce toxins and pollutions in our, in our ecosystem of our bodies, whether it's through our, our thought patterns, our limiting beliefs, the emotional spirals we engage in, and just these old patterns of behavior that we have just been accumulating and participating in over many, many years. We actually produce more toxins and pollutants. And then finally, stress. When we perceive the demands facing us to be greater than our capacity to meet them, we are in a constant state of tension. And tension and stress in and of themselves are toxins and pollutants to our inner ecosystem. They, they really prevent the natural and free-flowing 
flow of energy um, in our bodies and in our ecosystems. So you can see that, you know, these four categories, you know, interact with one another. We can get stressed, we can have overwhelming thoughts, we can turn to substances or media as a way to just numb ourselves out and then we don't digest any of this and then we just get really blocked and, and stuck, um, which really <laughs> doesn't leave our inner landscape and our inner waterways freely flowing. And we don't know what to do. Thankfully, there is a way, there is a way through this. And water, water is healing. Water is inherently healing. Water always finds a way through. And if you're here today, I'm, I'm assuming that most of you have a special relationship with water, that you're just naturally drawn to water, you love water, you find water healing. I know that when I need to be refreshed or renewed, I, I just always go to the water, whether it's taking a shower or a bath or jumping in the water, I always feel better. And I, I, I'm sure most of you do too. So water has natural healing properties. We don't even understand fully why it's so healing, but but we can experience it. And we came into this world through our mother's wombs. We came into this world through water. Our bodies are made up of 70% water. Our planet is made up of 70% water. And actually the, the proportion of the water inside of us to the physical structures inside of us is, is like the exact same proportion as the proportion of water on our planet to the proportion of land mass on our planet. So you could say that each one of our bodies is like a mini planet Earth and how we take care of our bodies and our ecosystems is a direct reflection of how we take care of our planet Earth. And so many humans have neglected taking care of our inner worlds, our inner landscapes, and that is reflected in how we take care of our planet. So water is healing. Water is a natural purifier, and that's really the focus of today's event. Um, very shortly, I'm gonna lead you into a meditative state where we'll, we, we will connect with your inner landscape, and I'm gonna guide you in a cleaning, a cleansing, and a purification process that will start this restoration work of restoring your inner landscape and your internal waterways to release whatever is ready to be released and so you can receive whatever healing you are ready to receive and also just a reminder that water is joy it's ease it's play it's beauty and it's magic you know so as a as a, as a psychiatrist and as someone who you know sits with a lot of people in their healing work um i think sometimes we we feel that healing work is, is like serious and it's like heavy. And water is here to remind us that healing can actually be easeful and playful and, and really joyful and beautiful. Um, so I want to infuse that and, and to remind us of the natural qualities of water. The natural qualities of water are the healing, the purification, this joy, this ease, this playful, this beauty, this magic, this power, this flow, this fluidity, this, you know, water is, is all of these qualities. And when we restore the quality of our water to be the natural state of water, then, our, then we become this natural expression of, of water ourselves. Okay. So, um, before we actually do the healing, I want to share this short two-minute video um, of the Elwa Dam restoration project that happened in Washington State about a decade ago in 2011. And I wanted just to give you a visual of like what ecological restoration looks like so you can have an image of like the process it takes um, and and the timing and the time it takes. And so, yeah, let's just watch this video together for two minutes.
Okay, so that was just, um, yeah, a little bit of a visual to see kind of what the work we're going to be doing in our internal waterways today. Um, so I'm going to have us now switch gears into the actual water healing experience. Um, unless there's any questions before we get started. Okay, so I don't see or hear any questions. Um, I, I use an anatomical approach to go through these layers of cleansing and clearing. So I start with the surface, external surface areas, and then I go through our digestive system. Um, and, and then I go through into actually our circulatory system. And then from there we use our anatomy to go to all our internal organs. Um, so I'm gonna guide you through the entire process. All you have to do is just, um, yeah, be in a receptive mode to, to receive. Okay, so let me just switch gears here. So I'm going to invite you all to get relaxed and comfortable in whatever position you feel most comfortable. I'm gonna just give us a few minutes to switch, a few moments to switch gears out of our thinking, intellectual mind, and really dropping into our inner landscape to being here in our bodies, to being here in circle together, whether you're live or on replay, the healing and your intentions will, will extend throughout. I'm really going to call in my guides, my supportive guides, you know, Gaia, Kuan Yin, Pele, Isis, Mother Mary, Mary Magdalene, Archangel Michael, Raphael, the angels, the fairies, the spirits, the plants, the animals, the rocks, the minerals, the crystals, the land, the rivers, the oceans, the ancestors, the descendants, the directions, all the elements. Pleiadians, the Arcturians, the Lyrans, and all benevolent spirits, my guides and your guides that are here to support our work today. You know, this is really about coming back into relationship and community with all of the support that we have here on this earth and beyond. I'm going to start by just grounding us all in, grounding us in to the earth, so wherever your body is making contact with the ground, I want you to imagine roots extending down from your body into the ground, through the ground and the surface that you're sitting on or your feet are placed on or you're lying on. Just imagine deep roots extending down through the soil, through the rocks and lava, into the crystalline core of the earth. So you are really rooted into the earth as our home, as a source of support and grounding for you. So as we do our release work today, anything that is ready to be released from your landscape, your body, you can release it into the earth. She will receive it and recycle it and compost it and transform it back into new life, into ingredients for new life. And your rootedness to the earth is not only for you to release whatever is no longer needed into the earth, but for you to receive, for you to receive nutrients and nutrition and support and holding from the earth 
as well. In our modern lives, we can get disconnected from the earth as a source of constant, infinite support. So it's a two-way channel for you to release and also for you to receive nutrients and nourishment. Then I want to invite you to also imagine a gold grounding cord extending down from the base of your spine deep into the ground. So extending down into the ground below you, through the soil, through the rocks and lava, into the crystalline core of the earth. So that if I were to give this grounding cord a tug, you could feel a little tug on the base of your spine. So not only are you rooted, but you're completely grounded and plugged into the earth. And as we continue the meditation and the cleansing and the clearing, you know, just follow along as well as you can. Know that whatever you are meant to receive, you will receive. If you're new to meditation and your mind waters or you find yourself falling asleep, don't worry about it at all. Your intention, you showing up and being here, whether you're live or watching the replay, your intention of being here, to clean and clear and purify your waterways in service to your own ecosystem and the greater planetary ecosystem will be perfect. So whatever happens, happens. All right, so now that we're grounded and rooted and plugged in, I'm going to just start by cleaning off the surface debris, sort of the surface Debris, the dust that you've just picked up from your day, from your week, just kind of being human. So I'm gonna invite you to imagine a golden liquid light pouring down from above onto the crown of your head and just slowly oozing down the external surface areas of your body. This is golden liquid light of the highest vibration and frequency. And all you have to do is just let it run over you like a golden liquid light, covering your, at the top of your head, covering your face, going down your back of your head, going down your neck, your shoulders, down your arms. The light will absorb and clean and clear. All you have to do is just allow. There's nothing you have to do. Let the light move down the front of your chest, the back of your back, down the sides of your chest and your abdomen, and your buttocks and your hips, and down your thighs, your legs, the front and back of your legs, your feet, down your arms and out your hands. And then we're just gonna let this golden liquid light drain into the roots that you've placed into the ground, drain into the roots, drain out of your grounding core, just releasing all the surface debris that's collected just on your skin and your energy body. Just dusting that off, releasing it to the ground, to the earth. And then now I'm gonna go through the digestive system. The digestive system actually, you know, for so many humans is where we have a lot of undigested, emotional, energy, trauma, unacknowledged, grief, loss. So we're gonna go, just go slowly through the digestive system and we're gonna start by, I'm gonna invite you to imagine a golden cup of golden liquid in front of you and I'm gonna invite you to take a sip of this golden liquid and hold it in your mouth before you swallow it. Take a sip of this golden liquid light and hold it in your mouth and just let it absorb into your oral cavity. Let it absorb into 
your teeth, your gums, the tissues of your cheeks, your palate. When you're ready, you're going to intentionally swallow this golden liquid light as a cleanser for your digestive system. And if you feel that you need a couple more sips or a couple more gulps, you know, do what intuitively feels right for you and swallow the golden liquid light into down your throat, into your esophagus, letting it coat the inner layers of your esophagus. As it goes into your stomach, let this golden liquid light enter your stomach, coating the inner mucosa of your stomach. Again, all you're doing is allowing the liquid light to do its natural healing properties. You're just allowing. I feel like there's a lot of tension in people's stomach. <laughs> there's clenching. So we're just going to stay here a little bit until I feel it relax. Again, tension is, is, is a blockage to our inner landscape. So we may be unconsciously clenching in our stomach all the time. We may not even know that, our solar plexus. So, you know, just feel into your stomach. I like to guide people to sometimes um, Bring their own touch. So bring the awareness of your own hands to your stomach if you want. Sometimes your own loving touch can, can kind of restore the fluidity, restore the fluidity of your organs. So you, you tune into your inner landscape and you intuitively work with what's coming up for you, the sensations. Yeah, and I'm tuning into all of us as a group and, and I'm feeling like the stomach is relaxing. The stomach is relaxing. So just let that golden liquid light just continue to soften the stomach restoring the natural pulsation. All of our internal organs have a pulsation, like the movement in the ocean. All right, so from the stomach, I think we can move on. We're gonna move on to the small intestine. <laughs> the small intestine by structure and function is the longest, largest part of our digestive system and so much old, stuck, emotional, undigested, unprocessed energy can get stuck in our small intestine. So we're just gonna take it really slowly through our small intestine, which if you need a visual, it's sort of imagine kind of like a bowl of noodles, like just kind of go back and forth. They just kind of go back and forth like this. There's all these nooks and crannies and, pot and villi where old stuff can get stuck. So we're just gonna let the golden liquid light do its magic as it flows into all these corners of our small intestine, cleaning, clearing, purifying, the old sludge, the old stuck, stagnant energy that can really get stuck here. I feel like, okay, there's a lot here. There's a lot here. So you work with your own in small intestine. It's moving, it's moving, it's moving slowly, which is great. You know, there's movement, but there's a lot of old stuck stuff we're cleaning out here. So yeah. You know, when you go to a river cleanup day, you're picking up the trash, the pollution. That's what we're doing for our internal waterways here. And I'm feeling, I'm feeling like there's a lot of stuff that needs to move through. And our 
our own bodies of water. You know, we are the keepers of our own bodies of water, our own systems of water. But we're also all connected to each other. And we're also all connected to the bodies of water on our planet. So pollution anywhere affects all of us. Those barrels of undigested toxins in our oceans affect us, just as if my neighbor, my family member has stuff in their system, it, it affects all of us. So, so we're doing some collective clearing too. Every cleaning and clearing that another person receives is a benefit to all of us. So I feel it's moving. I feel like it's moving. Some of the density, some of the heaviness is releasing. Let's just keep going. Let's just keep moving the liquid light through your small intestine, which is like 20 feet long. So it's pretty long. <laughs> That's why so much stuff gets stuck here. Breathe, breathe, breathe through it. And remember, we're restoring the fluidity. We're restoring the fluidity of your small intestine. Because the more fluid your small intestine is, the easier it is for, for things to get digested, for things to get released for things to flow, we're breaking up, we're breaking up the blockages into smaller pieces so that they can flow more easily out. So just, just continue to stay with your body. <coughs> stay with the small intestine moving that golden liquid light through the small intestine. Yeah, things are clearing up now. Things are clearing up. Good job, everyone. Good job cleaning up the waterways. We are cleaning up waterways right now in our own bodies, in the collective planetary waterways. Good job, yeah. All right, just continuing to let it filter through the small intestine. We're getting near the end, the small intestine. And then the small intestine connects with the colon or the large intestine in our lower right quadrant. So we're gonna enter, I feel like the work with the small intestine is done for now. We're gonna enter the large intestine, the lower right colon, the right ascending colon, right here. And we're gonna bring the liquid light from the right ascending colon up, up the colon. Sometimes since we're working against gravity here, if you're feeling like it's hard for your light to work its way up this right ascending colon, you might want to recline or lie down. That's what I've observed from clients. That sometimes they feel like it's hard to bring up that liquid because of gravity. And so you do whatever feels right for you. The colon by structure and function is larger in size and less mobile than the small intestine, but it's still meant to be fluid. It's still meant to have motion. And it still has a lot of nooks and crannies and corners that need to be cleaned and cleared, and purified. So just let the golden liquid light Make its way up your right ascending colon. Cleaning out, clearing out any blockages, moving across your transverse colon.
down the left descending colon, down the left side of your abdomen. Old, stuck, stagnant energy sometimes can, can show up in your inner landscape, in your consciousness as kind of dark areas or uh, cool areas. So if that's what you're feeling or that's what's coming up in your mind with images. That just means there's old, stuck energy there and you can, you can meet it with the visualization of warm, golden liquid light just pouring into the areas of coolness of store pouring into the areas of of darkness and just letting that move its way down into the rectal area and then out your anus out your grounding cord into the earth so again, the earth will receive everything that you've just cleared out of your digestive system that, that you no longer need in your inner landscape, in your internal waterways. All right, I feel like that was a lot of clearing. So if you wanna take some water, let's take a walk, like drink some water before we go into the circulatory system. <laughs> I'm gonna fill up my water, because that was a lot. That was a lot of theory. <sighs> yes, drink a lot of water today and over the next few days, and in general, that really helps to facilitate this process. Mm, how are we all doing? Any questions before we move into? Oh, sorry, my voice breaks up a lot. Is anyone else having trouble hearing me? I haven't experienced that. What's that? I have not experienced that. Oh, me breaking up? Right. Oh, your sound? Perfect. Great. I'm sorry, uh, Brigida. Um, I hope that my sound is coming through better. Awesome. Okay. Any questions, Mary? You kept falling asleep. Just, just know that like your body knows what it's doing. Um, don't worry about it. <laughs> Sometimes our body needs to rest while we receive this clearing. I felt like we moved a lot. So, all right. Um, if we're good to go, we're going to go into our circulatory system and, and really clean and clear out our circulatory system and all our internal organs. Okay. All right. Okay, so let's go back into kind of our inner landscape. We're going to land in our heart. So our heart is the heart of our circulatory system, as well as the heart of our soul, the heart of our spirit, the heart of our body of water that connects us to the planet and the planetary body of water. So let's just start in our hearts. Really focus your attention on your heart, this amazing organ that's been beating and supporting your life since you were in the womb. Just give a moment of, of gratitude to your heart. And really feel how our hearts are all connected to one another and to the earth herself, how our heartbeat can harmonize with the heartbeat of mother earth herself. And then I'm going to invite you to imagine the same way that we held the liquid light in our mouth before we swallowed it. We're gonna pour this golden liquid light into the chambers of our heart and just hold it there in our heart so that our heart can receive 
the healing, the purification, the cleansing, the clearing. Our heart has, has really, you know, can get gone through some wear and tear through all the travails of human living. So let the golden liquid light just heal, repair, restore the rips, the tears, the cracks of our heart, restoring the pink natural tissue of our heart, the chambers of our heart, the external surface areas of our heart. Imagine the golden liquid light taking on a pink glow in our heart space as well. Great. And then now we're going to use our body's own intelligent anatomy and design to send this golden liquid light from the left side, from the right side of chambers of our heart to our lungs, to our respiratory system. So to our bronchi, our bronchioles, our alveoli, all the little air sacs of our lungs that also have been working so tirelessly without our conscious effort, every breath we take. So just letting this liquid light restore our lungs, our respiratory system, and really being aware of the dance between our heart, our circulatory system, and our respiratory system, how the two work in concert with one another, in synchrony when we breathe in oxygen into our lungs and it gets transported to our blood, to all the tissues of our body and how our blood brings back the carbon dioxide to our lungs to be breathed out when we exhale. And how we, when we exhale, we're also in this dance with all the green life on our planet the plants absorbing our carbon dioxide and producing oxygen for us to take back in. This exchange of energy in our bodies between our lungs and our circulatory system, outside of our bodies, between our bodies and the plants and the green lamass. We bring this golden liquid light back from the lungs into the left chambers of our heart, where it will now be pumped through our circulatory system throughout our entire body. So bring the liquid light up your neck into your skull. And we're gonna really let this liquid light enter your skeletal structure, your bony structure. So let the golden liquid light enter your skull, all the bones of your skull, your vertebrae, your spinal cord, your ribs, your collarbone, the bones of your arms and fingers, your hip bones, your leg bones, your feet bones. Let the light enter into your cerebral spinal fluid. So the fluid that's surrounding your brain, your nervous system, so all of your neurons, all of your brain cells, all of your brain tissue, your cortex, your midbrain, your cerebellum, your brain stem, your spinal cord, and all your peripheral nerves that extend out from your spinal cord. Really cleaning and clearing out your nervous system, releasing any tension, any anxiety, any cloudiness, any fogginess of your nervous system restoring the water and the quality of the water in your cerebral spinal fluid. And then letting the golden liquid light enter all of your muscle tissues of your body, 
of your arms, chest, abdomen, and legs and feet, entering all the organs in your body, the external surface areas of the organs in your body, your lungs, your liver on the right side of your stomach that filters all the blood that from your digestive system, your gallbladder, your stomach, your pancreas, your spleen on the left side of your body, which is so important for your immune system, your white blood cells, your kidneys, your adrenal glands on top of your kidneys, your thyroid gland in your throat, your ureters that connect your kidneys to your bladder, clearing out the bladder, your reproductive organs, if you're a female, your uterus, your fallopian tubes, your ovaries, if you've had any of your organs removed, just focus on the location and the energy of your organs. You don't need to have your actual physical structure. There still may be some energetic clearing that needs to happen in the energy and location of your organs. If you're a male, your prostate gland, and your reproductive organs, your genitals, just all the way down your legs and your feet. Mm, okay. All right, I feel like that was a good clearing. And now I'm gonna invite you to, now that we've really kind of cleared out your system, I wanna rebalance and reharmonize your collective body of water. Like all the water in your system, I want to reharmonize it and recalibrate it. So I want you to imagine yourself entering into a sacred healing pool, like a marble pool that is filled with pure spring water of the highest, purest vibration. You're just going to step into this pool. You can disrobe and derobe if you'd like. It's kind of hard to float in water with your clothes on, so I always imagine myself naked, lying in the sacred pool. And you're just going to allow the pool, the water in this pool to hold you without any effort, so you don't have to do anything. You don't have to stay afloat. Like the water itself will hold you. You can just lie in the pool as if you're lying on a bed. You're really going to let this water, the vibration of this water, and train the vibration of your body of water. So it's sort of like when we come, when we tune our instrument, someone plays a note and we tune our instrument to that note. So this, this pool of water is the purest vibration of water that is pristine, natural, wise, water and you're going to allow your body of water to tune and harmonize with the vibration of this water. You don't have to do anything. Your water knows how to tune itself. Your water knows how to come into harmony if you allow it. And since we've cleared out all that blockage, we've cleared out so much your body of water is much cleaner and clearer and is able to more easily tune itself and come into harmony with this body of water. Just keep breathing. I feel that everyone is coming into great harmony with this body of water. Once you come into harmony with it, 
we all can feel the greater harmony, the greater vibration. That vibration grows in strength. It's easier for other people to tune in when other people's vibrations are loud and strong. You might notice that your breath might also start coming into synchrony with this body of water. I feel that as your body of water is harmonized, this body of water and, and our collective body of water today all of the participants here live or on the replay. Our body of water is harmonizing with each other. We're also going to harmonize with our planetary body of water. All of the bodies of water on our planet are gonna come into synchrony and harmony and vibration with the larger body of water on our planet for collective cleaning and clearing and purification. Because every little bit we clean and clear contributes to the collective body of water. All right. So when you feel complete, you can bring your awareness back out of the meditative state. Drink some water, continue to drink fluid. And yeah, bring yourself slowly back. <laughs> Sometimes people float away, float, float far away and don't want to come back. And that's fine too. Go where your waters want to take you. Um, but I'd love to just check in with how everyone's doing and see how people are doing, if there's any questions or comments. Michelle, go ahead and unmute yourself. Thanks. That felt so good. I, I do a similar meditation in the morning, but having everyone here, I could really feel the amplification of the experience. And then I had this little, um, experience of like as the energy came in and uh, the circulatory system I, I, I saw this flash of my bones being really dry mm -hmm. and then just for an instant I saw and then they started to absorb and uh, like hydrate and expand and I just I was really taken away by the experience of having my bones rehydrate that was very intense so that's why I didn't come back right away like it's not quite it's not quite <laughs> but I just I didn't see how unhydrated they were till they started drinking that was the cool part mm. thank you for sharing that Michelle I also felt the amplification of our collective body of water and um, yeah I it we so often forget that our bones even though they're like you know, structures, they also need hydration. And so, yeah, you can go back and, and do that on your own. Your, your body will let you know what it needs. Um, go ahead, Anne, you can unmute yourself. And So what I experienced, I, I had this huge um, emotional feeling as I put my hands over my heart and I just I was like 
you're looking for support and here I am right here with you and I've always been there. Mm. Your heart was telling you that. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so beautiful. Our hearts yeah. are always there for us and it's good for us to acknowledge that and receive that support. Mm. Yeah, and I could feel the collective energy too. It's, it's just, yeah, very powerful and supportive. Yeah. Anyone else want to say anything? I, I, there, there, there's a couple more slides that I want to share with you guys. Um, and if you need to run, that's, you know, that's fine. Uh, but uh, there's a little more I want to share with you about um, how to continue supporting each other. But anyone else want to say anything before we continue? Jenna, did you unmute yourself? I don't know if you're just connecting, but um, okay. I, Jamie, that was, yeah, go ahead, Jamie. I experienced similar things um, that have been said. It was really emotional and so much more powerful um, in clearing everything out and with the visualization as a, with us all together. It was, it was incredible. It still is. I still feel it. So thank you. Thank you, Jamie. Okay, well, I'll have room for questions later, but I wanna share with you um, an, another beautiful video that I think speaks to what we're talking about, about why it feels so good to be in a collective doing this work. Um, so this is just a short three minute uh, video about the consciousness of water. And, oops, nope, 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 don't want, I really, really watch that stop you let's go to the consciousness of water because we were really working with the consciousness of water here so this is a really this is a really powerful context when i look to social structures or society structures and i look into nature I find in nature a mirror to what we do in our society. We could also say this society did to the water what it did to the women, or we could say it did to the rivers what it did to love. My name is Bernd Müller. I'm living and working in Tamera, healing biotope in Portugal, and I'm the director of the Institute for Global Ecology. Water management is the basic of our ecological work here. Victor Schauberger, a researcher who lived 100 years ago, very clearly perceived water as a living being, acknowledging the consciousness of water. So when I was a young man, I had to decide, I want to know whether this is true. And if that is true, I want to know how to move water in the right way. And this now became my profession. And if I look to all the social issues of love, eros, partnership, when we talk about healing of love, we talk about creating trust. What is trust building in nature? And then I did look into the ecosystem. The soil is what in a social structure is the trust. In ecosystem restoration, everybody all over the world agrees upon it's about building soil. This soil then helps to receive rainwater, keep it on the land, and keep the smaller water cycles running. In the water cycle, the most feminine polarity would be the spring water, and the most masculine extreme is the rainwater. So if I tell the story, through this eyes on a water cycle, the most masculine quality of the water is coming and doesn't find the soil that can receive it, and filter it deeper in, then it's creating a runoff, creating damage. Masculine energy that cannot be received would convert into a violent energy. As we know from all over the world, these floodings that are really violent events. When humanity learns again 
to move water in the right way. Then and only then, nature will respond with such an abundance that all living beings have access to basic needs like water, food and energy. such a beautiful video and such a beautiful vision. Um, I think what really strikes me in that is that not only do we have to purify the water and allow the water to flow again, but we also need to create these containers, these containers for water to be channeled for new growth and for new life. And so I, I wanted to share with you um, all my vision, <laughs> my vision of what I wanted to create. I just want to create consciousness of water. Yes, I, what I want to create is a water keepers community. And I, I just want to share my vision of that with you because ecological restoration work takes time. It takes time as we watched in that video uh, of the Elwa Dam being restored. It takes time for the sh old structures to come down and new flow to come through. But there's a tipping point. There's a tipping point when nature takes over and a natural process takes over and, and the habitats get restored and, and new life grows again and, and nature herself takes over. And it's, it's a beautiful, magical process. And, and that's my vision for the water keepers community. Um, my vision for the water keepers community is a sacred container devoted to this work of human ecological restoration. And it's a unique combination of personal healing and transformation and environmental action. Because the people drawn to this community will be passionate about the environment and they'll have creative gifts that they wanna share with the world and they know that the best way to serve our planet is by doing our own inner work and clearing out ourselves to become the fullest, most alive expression of ourselves in service to the biodiversity, health, and vitality of our planetary ecosystem. And it's a loving and thriving community that is its own ecosystem of support, connection, and collaboration that co-creates new templates for modern sustainable ecological living in harmony with the earth. These are templates that don't currently exist in the human structures. We need to create them together. So the Water Keepers community is a place for you if you love water, you're naturally drawn to water, and you want to learn from the wisdom of water. You have been feeling disconnected or separated from water and want to restore your relationship with water. You've been feeling stuck, stagnant, uninspired, and you want to restore flow and vitality to your life. And you know you have gifts to share and you're ready to express them into the world in service to our planet at a time when she so needs everyone to more fully come alive and express themselves and you want to be a part of a global community of water keepers devoted to serving and honoring water. And I feel like the triad of the, the water keepers community in my vision is that your own personal transformation leads to collective action together that leads to planetary restoration on a global scale. So you'll receive meditations, healings, activations, and channeled wisdom and guidance from water and Mother Earth. Today was just like a small sample of what water wants to teach us. Water herself holds all the wisdom and she, she just wants, she wants to guide us and be our leader. And so we'll gather twice a month in group calls to receive this wisdom, to provide support, to do healing work on ourselves and for our planet. And I belong to a global network of experts and healers and indigenous wisdom that I'll also be calling in to guide us and to, to collaborate with us. 
there will be a community platform for us all to connect and synergistically collaborate with one another. And the sacred container held in the vibration of divine love and service in and of itself is all that is needed for transformation work to occur. Um, that in my own experience being in such containers, I know that just being held in such a container, miracles and magic happens. So water needs fertile soil. It needs a sacred container of trust to hold her wisdom and channel her flow in the most harmonious way for life on our planet. And this is my vision for the Water Keepers community. And this is your special invitation to become a founding member of this Water Keepers community. And as a psychiatrist in private practice, I've always had this conflict between making quality healing services accessible to as many people as possible. So this is my commitment to make this offering as financially accessible to as many people as possible. And so if you join now as a founding member and help co-create this community, you can join at an introductory rate of $49 a month. And, you know, this is going to be such a valuable investment in not only your own personal healing and transformation, but the ripple effects it's going to have in your family and in your community and in the planet. And if you sign up annually, you save an additional two months, so $400, $90 annually. This will go through the end of the month. After May 1st, the price will go up to $99 a month. But if you join by the end of the month, you'll be grandmothered in at the $49 a month price for as long as you want to stay um, in the community. And you can cancel at any time. You know, some of you will, will stay for a little bit and get what you need, get your own waters flowing and go off and do your beautiful work. And some of you will want to stay longer. And, you know, that's the, that's the flow of water. Water will always be there flowing to receive you and hold you and it will give you what you need when you need it. And this is my, my, my own waters guided me to create this container to be in service to water. So if this resonates with you, um, Aviji, you can put the link in the chat uh, if people want to check out the information about the, the keepers community, the water keepers community, you can um, look at that. But regardless of whether you, join the keepers community the water keepers community or not i want to leave you today with this message of you are a water keeper like all of us are water keepers because we are keepers of our own waters and our responsibility and way of honoring water is keeping our waters running as freely and purely as possible in our own lives, in service to our families, our communities, our, our planet. So mahalo, thank you, thank you so much uh, for being here with me today. And you can find me in the Water Keepers community. If you have any questions, you can email me. I'll send out a follow-up email um, with more information, but really, thank you, thank you. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for showing up. And if you guys have any questions, I'm more than happy to stay on and answer them. But otherwise, I hope everyone has a beautiful day. Yes, Michelle, I'll share the link to that movie. Um, I will, I'll, I'll share that with you. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much. If you have any questions, I'll stay on. Otherwise, um, thank you for cleaning and clearing your waters today. That definitely contributed to the cleaning and clearing of our collective waters. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. It's beautiful. Thank you so much. 
Thank you, Jessica. Beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mama. <laughs> mm. Liz, if yeah. we want, if we want to join, will that be in the follow-up email? The link. Yes. To... Yes, I'll send okay. the follow-up email. If you'd love to join, I'd love. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Jamie. Thank you so 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 much. Have a good day. You too. Weekend. You too. Thank you. Mm. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Beverly. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you, Helen. Thank you, Mama. Thank you. All right. I'm going to close out. Bye, Mama. <laughs>